What's up, YouTube? Um, just want to thank everybody for subscribing. Uh, thanks for comments. Thanks for checking out my channel. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing all this stuff. Uh, today, I'm going to be making a video about hydro flask and how to customize your hydro flask. Um, this is one that we've had for a while. I uh, have a sticker on it already. Um, I bought a different kind of cap for it already just because uh, I kind of like this style. But we have another one. Uh, it's a little bit more dinged up, a little bit beat up. I don't like the color of this one at all. So what I'm going to do today is I'm, in a, I'm going to paint it to this teal color. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Uh, what I have here is just some uh, isopropyl alcohol and I have a scuff pad and some 220 uh, sandpaper. So uh, it's pretty much all you need. And then I have some different kind of uh, wide flat cap bands that I'm going to put on the top to make the color pop a little bit more. Uh, I chose this pink one for my girlfriend so that she can have pink and teal. I think that'll go really well together. Um, but uh, for the first part, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, prep the actual flask. Um, so let me get this stuff out of the way. Uh, what I'm going to start off with is just a scuff pad. I um, mean, get these at any auto auto or auto paint place. You can probably get it at any kind of hardware store. I'm sure they'll have scuff pads that have them for like regular painting as well as uh, for car painting. Uh, this one's a little bit of a uh, it's not as rough. There's different colors. I think the maroon one's a little bit more rough. Um, but what you can do is just start off with this and scuff it. And yep, that's like what I was afraid of is that this paint that's on the Hydro Flask is actually pretty um, it's a pretty good tempered paint, so what I'm going to do is take the 220 sandpaper to it and then see how this reacts. This is going to work a lot better. And all you really need to do is just scuff it enough and get the top layer of paint off. You don't need to take it all the way down to the metal no point in doing that, no point in getting it all the way down. I just want to get it down enough, especially where these little logos are, so that you can't see any logos through. If you have like a white one and it has a black logo on it and you're changing it to a light color, you're really going to have to get that black color off of there before you paint it. Um, I didn't paint, repaint this one at all, I'm going to leave this one because I like it uh, white, but um, for this, because I'm going a little bit darker of a color, it shouldn't be too bad, but I still want to make sure I get down enough uh, so that it can stick onto there. Um, for this part up here, I'm going to skip through some of the sanding for you guys. Sanding's pretty basic. Um, what you can do is actually mask off the section that you don't want to get paint on. So do it already because then you can sand it. What I'm going to do is sand um, around this with it with the masking tape on here already. And because it's curved it's going to be kind of a pain. You're going to have to go through and adjust the tape a lot. So go ahead and do that. You can also get painter's tape or like, uh, I don't know, they have like the frog tape. Uh, if any kind of colored tape, like the green or the blue, is going to work a little bit better uh, than regular masking tape just because it comes off easier. Um, I used to work at a body shop when I was uh, just out of high school, so that's how I learned all this kind of painting stuff. So. I spent a lot of time masking because when you work at a body shop and you're younger, you're basically the the body shop bitch. <laughs> they make you do all the masking, all the sanding, and um, very little painting at all. But um, once you learn the basics of masking, that's really most of the battle. 
Um, I repainted my motorcycle. I'm sure some of you guys be subscribed to me. I've seen my motorcycle and some of the uh, things I've done with that. But as you can see, I just went around the side with the masking tape and then went along with the curve. Uh, if you're patient, you can pretty much make any curve. You can make any little spot. Another thing, if you're getting into really tricky spots, is you can use aluminum foil because um, then you can just bend it around and then you can actually reuse it again too. So that's one trick for doing that stuff. Um, I want to pause the video and um, finish masking this and then finish uh, scuffing it and then I'll show you guys what the next step is which I'm going to uh, clean it off with the alcohol. Another option also is with objects that are small like this, like I've done with some of my motorcycle parts, uh, you can you can actually take the part and bring it to your sink and use dish soap on it and then let it dry. Um, dish soap works great for um, cleaning off everything and getting all the residue off and then it doesn't leave any extra residue as long as you have like a good dish soap. Um, I just realized uh, I was going to use the alcohol um, but I don't actually have any <laughs> paper towel. So um, I'm going to come over here into my kitchen and turn on some lights and show you guys uh, what I do for um, getting the paint off of the uh, have some nice lovely green hands now all I do is just seriously just put it in the water and if you have a scrubber pad like this guy here my lights come back on um, you can use one of these. Um, I would use a fresh one if you have it, because uh, this will actually help you take off some of the paint, um, as well as get the grease and the oil off. One issue you have with, uh, with painting is that you can't have any kind of grease or oil on the surface, because otherwise the paint will bubble. Right there, I'm actually going to just take some soap, put it on my hands. This way I clean my hands off as well because you don't know where or what kind of grease or sweat or you know whatever's on your hands. And then dry. A little intermission here. Uh, I definitely want to make sure that you shake the spray can or whatever kind of paint you're using. You probably could use a certain type of brush and paint on it as well. You could probably do like custom designs or whatever. Um, for me, I just want it one solid color, and I'm just gonna, I'm probably gonna put some stickers on top of it as well. Um, if you guys have Hydro Flasks, if you get one of these vinyl stickers, uh, the ones that are for your car really, uh, whenever I put it in the dishwasher, it doesn't have any issues. So. I put that in the dishwasher, just take the cap off, and then throw it on the top rack. No issues whatsoever. So uh, as far as customizing your Hydro Flask, there's lots of different options. Um, I know just if you have some of the cheaper stickers, uh, the ones that are really made to be like put on paper or whatnot, you probably don't want to use those unless you're going to be hand washing your Hydro Flask. Uh, I've had some cheaper ones that aren't supposed to go in the dishwasher, and even with just putting the sticker on there and then having like hand wash it and it gets wet. There's been issues with the stickers. So I definitely recommend a vinyl sticker for Hydro Flask. And also again, I use one of these, this wide cap, uh, wide flat cap bands. Uh, they have a lot of different colors that you can get. So you can switch it around and then pick which colors that you want to use. I also just use one of these to put around uh, on the middle part here so that you just get a little bit better grip on it so it doesn't slide out of your hand and all these things get dented up pretty easy. Um, plus then you can pick certain colors that you want to do or you know certain teams that you like. I'm from Wisconsin, so I've got to represent some Green Bay Packer colors. Uh, if you guys see, I have the Red Label on there. Uh, my buddies from Red Label Clothing. If you like their stuff, check out the, uh, the hats and they have stickers and whatnot. Uh, they did a collabo with uh, this guy's Lotus a while back. I like the way these clothes go together, so I'm going to represent that. But uh, the Hydro Flask should pretty much be dried. I just let it sit out in the sun for a few minutes, probably five, ten minutes. Uh, the sun's pretty strong here in Hawaii, so you can do that. On to the painting stage.
Um, let's see. So first thing I do is I have spray paint is I usually just do like a few test runs of how the spray goes. Uh, this isn't a very good spray can. As if you can see, it leaves just a, a straight circular line. Uh, when you buy spray cans, you want to get a nozzle that has a fan and it works a lot better. Uh, the reason I didn't do it with this one is because I just wanted this color. This is the color I was going for. But uh, that being said, uh, you're just going to want to go a little bit further away and just do lighter coats. So um, let's get started. So whenever you paint, you want to make sure that you go in a left to right motion or an up to down motion and you don't want to cover too much area in one swipe. So I'm just gonna get started. So you can see. And then the next, when you do this later, you're gonna to want to go the opposite way. Um, it's the same way with using markers or uh, when you color in something on paper. If you only color it one way, you're gonna see the striations and you're gonna see the how the spray paint went. For the first coat, lighter is better. Uh, you don't need to go nuts with the, the paint. When you get more comfortable with how the paint works, uh, you'll get to that kind of flow that you can hear when I'm spraying it. I kind of start off to the one side and then spray and stop because then you get an even coat all the way through. Uh, it's really the best way you're going to be able to do it. Um, if you do get paint on anything that you don't want it on, <laughs> uh, the easiest way to get it off is going to be the alcohol. Or you can use paint removers or like nail polish remover, acetone, all that kind of stuff. It's all going to work. Uh, if you get it on glass, which I'm painting on a glass table, uh, you can use a razor blade. Just make sure that you don't actually get it in and dig it into the glass because it will leave scratches if you hit it in the wrong angle. Um, also on glass, you can use triple zero, triple zero, or quadruple zero uh, steel wool, and it'll take any blemishes off. It's also really good for your uh, windshields if you have any dings on your windshields or scratches on the windshield. Uh, it'll take all the kind of dirt and everything off. So I'm um, just gonna go with a little bit more of a coat here. Get the hydro flash logo to go away. Yeah, this spray can is really kind of hard to use because uh, it doesn't give me the best spray pattern. So that's why I really have to shoot it from further away. I'm just gonna let that first coat dry for a while. I went ahead and put another coat on. I uh, flipped, flipped it upside down and then got around the edge a little bit here. Uh, that seemed to be the hardest part for me. Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this and just let it dry for a while. Um, I can either stick it in the sun 
or another option is that you can actually put it in your oven or in like a toaster oven or something and then just put it on like maybe 150 to 200 degrees uh, probably not even 200 because you don't want anything to happen like with the tape or anything so set it to like 175 uh, and then put it in there and let it let the paint harden and let the paint really set in that's the best way to do it uh, if, if we were doing it at an actual shop they have a kind of a baking oven for the cars where it gets really hot and this really sets the, the paint lets the paint dry faster so that it sets up better um, so that's the best option uh, so for me I'm just going to stick it in the sun and let it uh, cure for a while but uh, that's pretty much it I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, how to customize a hydro flask pretty easy. Um, I wouldn't put any stickers on it at least until at least 24 hours after because sometimes the chemicals are still coming out of the paint and if you put a sticker on top of it it's gonna bubble up or there's gonna be issues with it sticking and then it's gonna mess up your paint. So just watch out for that and if you guys have any questions please leave comments. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Um, but uh, thanks for watching.